a guide to your Toronto Community Housing lease. Welcome to Toronto Community Housing. Hello and welcome to your new home with Toronto Community Housing. Toronto Community Housing is owned by the City of Toronto. With 58,000 rental units across the city, we are Canada's largest social housing landlord and home to more than 164,000 people. As a Toronto Community Housing tenant, you will have many opportunities to become involved in and around your community. Being active in your community is one way to ensure your new home will be a great place to live. Moving into a new home can be exciting, challenging, and maybe even a little intimidating, especially when you are asked to sign your lease. We put together this video to give you information about the Toronto Community Housing team in your community, how rent is calculated, and guide you through your lease before you sign it. The Toronto Community Housing Team In each community, a team of people work to ensure that you enjoy your new home with Toronto Community Housing. There are many ways you can contact Toronto Community Housing if you want to report a maintenance problem, get involved in the community, or just ask a question. You can call, speak with your superintendent, or visit the operating unit office. You can call Toronto Community Housing 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year by calling 416-981-5500 to speak with an agent. Our knowledgeable and helpful agents are there to help with any request or to answer any questions you may have. If you need to report a maintenance problem, the agent will create an electronic work order for your superintendent who will then complete the required repairs. You will get an easy track number which you can use to follow up on your request if you need to. If you have questions about your rent calculation, account balance, transfer request or any other issue related to your tenancy, an agent will have the information you need or create a service request so the tenant services coordinator can call you back with an answer. If your building is managed directly by Toronto Community Housing, a team of people are available to help you. Your superintendent works in your building or complex. The superintendent looks after all the day-to-day -day maintenance issues in your building. The superintendent's office hours are posted in your building's lobby. If you have anything in your home that needs to be fixed, such as a leaking tap or a broken window, you can speak to the superintendent and he or she will arrange to have it repaired as quickly as possible or fill in a tenant service request form. For rent or other tenancy issues, you can contact your tenant services coordinator. Your tenant services coordinator is responsible for renting units, signing leases, calculating your rent, and following up on community safety reports regarding any issues or disputes that may arise in the building or community. Your tenant services coordinator works out of your operating unit office. If you need to reach your tenant services coordinator, you can visit your operating unit office, meet with them at your building, or call 416-981-5500. A customer service facilitator will greet you at the operating unit office. The customer service facilitator has knowledge and responsibilities similar to the tenant services coordinator, but their main job is to answer any questions you may have, give you information you may need, and resolve any issues quickly and effectively. You may live in a building that is managed by a property management company. If so, you can still call Toronto Community Housing at 416-981-5500. The services you receive from the property management team in your building or development will be the same as the ones received by tenants living in buildings managed directly by Toronto Community Housing. The job functions of the staff working in your building are a little different from the job functions of staff in directly managed communities. The property management team includes a property manager, property administrator, and superintendent. The property manager and the property administrator will deal with all your rent, maintenance, 
parking and tenancy related requests. The superintendent works in your building or complex and looks after all the day-to-day -day maintenance issues. The property management office may be located in the building where you live or in a nearby building. Their office hours will be posted on the office door. The operating unit manager and community housing supervisor oversee the team's day-to-day -day operations and support staff and residents when needed. If you decide to become involved in your community as a tenant representative or tenant leader, you will meet many other members of the Toronto Community Housing Team. Health promotion officers and youth engagement coordinators work in every community to help with community events, activities for youth, the tenant election process, and many other programs throughout Toronto Community Housing. Toronto Community Housing also has a community safety unit which is available to residents 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. Special constables work in all communities and they provide various services to residents. They patrol communities, enforce parking, respond to disturbances, and work closely with Toronto Police Service to ensure Toronto Community Housing communities are safe. If you require their assistance, they are available at 416-921-2323. Call 911 if there is an emergency, for example, a life-threatening situation or a fire. What is a lease? Like all Toronto Community Housing tenants, you will sign a lease when you move into your unit. The lease clearly sets out all the rights and responsibilities of you, the tenant. A lease is also called a tenancy agreement. The lease has two parts. The first part is the actual lease or tenancy agreement. The second part includes two schedules that are referred to in the lease and which contain more detail. Your lease is a legal contract between you and Toronto Community Housing. It follows the rule of law under the Residential Tenancies Act and social housing legislation. You agree to follow the terms by signing the lease. You can continue to live in your unit as long as you follow the terms of your lease. Basic Information and Terms This section is at the beginning of a lease. It states the legal name of the landlord and the name of the tenant or tenants, the exact address of the rental property including the unit number and the initial term of the lease. Your lease will have a section that lists the names of the people who are allowed to live in your unit. These people are considered occupants. If your household changes after you sign your lease, for example, someone moves in or out, you must let Toronto Community Housing know by calling or visiting your operating unit office. You will be told what documents you need to give the office. You must do this within 30 days of the change. Your lease sets out the terms of your monthly rent payment, how much you have to pay every month, and when each payment is due. Your rent is due on the first day of each month. A section of your lease lists the appliances, utilities and facilities that are included in your monthly rent. Look at this section carefully to make sure you understand what is included in your monthly rent payment before you sign your lease. Some services are paid for by Toronto Community Housing with the cost passed on to you as part of your rent such as gas, hydro and heat. In some locations, there are some services that you must set up and pay for yourself, such as hydro and gas. In all locations, you will have to set up and pay for cable, telephone and internet. If your rent is geared to your income, you will see a section that looks like this. This section of the lease deals with all the money issues, not just your rental payment. Your lease will also tell you if you have to pay a fee for other services not covered by your rent, such as parking. Once a year, Toronto Community Housing will calculate your rent based on your household's total gross monthly income and tell you how much rent to pay. If your income changes, your rent may change. You must report changes to your income to Toronto Community Housing within 30 days. These are the types of things you have to report. 
if you are earning more or less money than when you signed your lease, if your sources of income change, if someone moves in or moves out of your household or the birth of a baby, if you own or acquire any assets or residential property. Your market rent is the amount of rent you would pay if you are not eligible for a subsidy or if you are a market rent tenant. The market rent will likely increase every year. Income Verification If your rent is geared to your income, when you sign your lease and at least once a year after you move in, you will be asked to complete and submit a form telling us about your income and assets. The form includes information you provide to Toronto Community Housing. When you receive this package by mail, read it carefully and make note of any changes. Then, attach the required information, have every member of your household who is 16 years and older sign it, and return the completed form in the drop box in your building, directly to your property management office, if you live in a building managed by a private management company, or to your operating unit office. It is important to complete the form and return it on time. If you don't, you may lose your rent geared to income subsidy. It is your legal responsibility to report any changes in your income, your assets, your sources of income, or who is living in your household within 30 days. If you don't, you will be misrepresenting your income and breaking the rules of your lease. If you are found to have misrepresented your income, you can lose your rent geared to income subsidy, be backcharged rent, or be evicted. Tenant Responsibilities As a tenant, you and everyone living with you, and in some cases anyone visiting you, must meet all the obligations and responsibilities in your lease. For example, your rent is due on the first day each month. You must keep your unit clean and in good condition. You must repair or pay for the repair of damages caused by neglectful or reckless behavior. This is different from the regular wear and tear caused by living in the unit. You are not allowed to change the locks or add your own lock to your unit door. You must not disturb the reasonable enjoyment of other tenants. This includes not making too much noise, controlling your pets, and keeping common spaces clean. Access to the unit by the landlord. You are entitled to privacy in your home, but Toronto Community Housing staff may have to come into your unit from time to time. Your lease will clearly state the reasons why Toronto Community Housing staff, contractors, or other authorized persons can enter your unit. Toronto Community Housing provides its tenants with 24 hours written notice when possible before entering your unit. Some of the reasons are 24 hour notice for non-emergency repairs, improvement, show your unit to new tenants if you are moving out, test safety equipment or to inspect your unit. You will not receive 24 hours notice of entry if there is an emergency. Moving out of your apartment. The Residential Tenancies Act has rules about how much notice a tenant must give a landlord before moving out. Your lease says that you must give written notice to Toronto Community Housing at least 60 days, two calendar months, before you plan to move out of your unit. The termination date must be the last day of the monthly rental period. Written notice can be a signed letter, or a completed notice to terminate a tenancy form. You can print this form from the Landlord and Tenant Board's website, pick one up at your Superintendent's office, Operating Unit office, or call 416-981-5500 to have one mailed to you. Verbal notice will not be accepted at any time. The notice must be in writing. Disclosure of Personal Information before you sign your lease, you will be asked to sign a household income and assets review form. The form clearly states the laws that Toronto Community Housing must follow when collecting and using your personal information. By signing the form, you give permission to Toronto Community Housing to use this information and determine eligibility for rent geared to income. 
Schedules. Things that are in the schedule include information about pest control, building safety, window locks, screens and balcony use, safety equipment, proper garbage disposal. If you live in a house or townhouse, you are responsible for cutting the grass in your yard or removing snow from your walkway and sidewalk. Two very important items to understand are, first, to check your smoke detector regularly by pushing the smoke detector test button. Don't tamper with the smoke detector or fire alarm in your unit. You must report any malfunction to Toronto Community Housing at 416-981-5500, your superintendent or your operating unit office immediately. And second, your lease requires you to purchase renter's insurance. You will receive more information in your leasing package. Signing your lease. At the end of the lease, there will be a place to enter the date and name or names of a representative of Toronto Community Housing. This could be a staff member or a member of a property management company. Everyone in your household who is 16 and older will be required to sign the lease. Toronto Community Housing staff must give you one copy of the lease and you will be asked to sign in a separate place confirming that you have received a copy. Leasing Package after you have signed your lease, you will receive a leasing package. The package will include many important documents. You will receive a checklist. Please ensure that you receive all of the documents listed on it. Landlord and Tenant Board The Landlord and Tenant Board provides information about what to do if you think Toronto Community Housing is not following the rules in your lease. To enforce the Residential Tenancies Act, the provincial government created the Landlord and Tenant Board. One of the board's responsibilities is to provide information about the Act to landlords and to tenants. In many cases, once landlords and tenants are made aware of their rights and obligations, they can resolve any problems that come up. But, if the landlord and tenant cannot resolve their problems, the Landlord and Tenant Board has the authority to hear both sides and settle the dispute. Here is the contact information for the Landlord and Tenant Board. You will receive this information in your leasing package. You can access Landlord and Tenant Board information on the Internet. If you don't have access to the Internet at home, you can use a computer with Internet access for free at any public library. Conclusion It is important that you read your lease carefully or have someone read it with you so you understand all the terms and conditions you are agreeing to. We hope that you found the information in this video helpful. Toronto Community Housing wants every tenancy to be successful. Remember, we're here to help. You can call us at 416-981-5500 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome to Toronto Community Housing and congratulations on your new home. To review the information in this video, you can either watch the entire video again or you can select the chapter that interests you.